Welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we are going to be looking at how we can actually start to set up our prompt generation and send it off to the servers. It can create an image and then send us a response back. Okay, so in order to begin, what we're going to do is we are gonna create a brand new UI canvas right here. And inside of this canvas, we are gonna create a new UI raw image element right here, which we are just going to call our player avatar icon, okay? Uh, we're not going to worry about too much. We're not going to worry too much about the AI about the UI just yet. Uh, we just want to get an image and have it be displayed on screen. So what I'm going to then do is I'm going to create a new folder, call this one scripts, and inside of this folder we are going to create a new C sharp script called player avatar generator. Okay, and we then want to go ahead and attach this to a game object. So I'm going to go ahead create a new empty object here call it underscore player avatar generator, just like the script and attach the script like so. We can then open it up inside of Visual Studio and get started on our coding. So the first thing we want to do inside of this script is just delete the start and update function since we don't really need those at the moment. And then we want to be using some libraries at the top. Okay, first of all, we're going to be using uh, OpenAI in order to communicate with the OpenAI servers. We then want to also be using Unity Engine.UI in order to modify and access the UI elements. We then want to be using TM Pro to access the Text Mesh Pro uh, text elements that we're going to add later on. And then some more uh, Unity related ones. We're going to be using Unity Engine.Networking. And this is going to allow us to download the image from the web once we actually make the request. And then finally, we want to be using System.Threading.Tasks because in order for this to work, we are going to be needing uh, multi-threading and that is what we use with this library right here. Now, inside of our class, what we're going to do is we first of all need to create our open API packet, our open AI API object, which is gonna allow us to communicate with the servers. So I'm gonna create a private open AI API object right here just call it API, and this is going to be equal to a new one of those. Okay, so this is what we use in order to actually make the request. Now, what we're then going to do is we're also going to create a variable right here. This is going to be a private raw image, and this is going to be our player avatar icon. Now, in order for this to actually be uh, serialized in the inspector, so we can drag that property in, we are going to make this a serialized field, a serialized field, okay? So it is then displayed inside the inspector and we can drag the raw image component in. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to create our function which is going to send off the response, uh, or it's gonna send off the request, wait for a response, and then assign the image to that raw image right there, okay? So to do this, we are gonna create a function. We're gonna go async void generate image. Now, what we have created here is an asynchronous function. And this basically means this is a function that isn't going to run alongside all the others, okay? Because typically, a function will run within a single frame, uh, whereas with an asynchronous function, we have the ability to pause it and wait for something to happen, okay? Very similar to a coroutine. Uh, an asynchronous function runs on its own thread, and it allows us to, like I said, pause the function. And in our case, we are gonna pause it when we send off the request. We are then going to wait, you know, one, two, three, four, five seconds for a response, and then we're gonna continue on with the rest of the code. So, all you need is the async keyword at front in order to make a function asynchronous. Now, inside of here, what we are going to do is we are going to create our request. So we first of all need to go variable, call this one request, and this is gonna be equal to a new create image request. And this create image request is going to be using the DALI model. So this is for image generation. We then want to add in two opening and closing uh, squiggly brackets like so. And then we need to basically define some of the variables. So the first one is going to be the prompt, okay? Now, the prompt is basically the message that we want to send over to the AI in order to tell it what we want to create. Now, this is going to be um, constructed later on via our input fields, our drop downs, and all that. But for now, let's just make it simple. We're just going to have this said to something such as create 
an RPG player icon in a painted style, okay? Nice and simple. We then want to go comma, and then on a new line, we need to define a size for the image. So I'm gonna go size equals image size dot, and you'll see there are three different sizes. We have 1024 pixels, 256, and 512. Now, since this is just gonna be an icon, we can make it 256, so I'm gonna select that one right there. Okay, so we have our request. Now, this request isn't gonna do much on its own. It's basically just a container with data inside of it. So what we need to do is get this request and send it over to the OpenAI servers. And to do that, we are going to go to a new line here. We're gonna create a new variable called response. And this one is gonna be equal to await api.createImage and we'll send over the request. Now, this line of code here is very important because this is where we are pausing the function, okay? Whenever we have the keyword await inside of an async function, this basically means we want to stop running the code in this function until whatever task is afterwards has been completed. In our case, we are waiting for a response from the server. So this may take a couple seconds, but when we eventually do get a response from the server, we then can continue on with the code. Now, the first thing we want to do is make sure that we actually have a valid response because if we have some null data, we don't want to try and convert that to an image. Otherwise, we'll get a bunch of errors in the console. So to check this, we are going to go if response.data equals equals null or response.data.count equals zero, then that basically means that we had no image returned to us. So in that case, we are just going to debug.log error and we are just going to say uh, cannot generate an image from the prompt and then return. So that is our error handling right there. Okay, so we have created our request, we have sent it off in order to wait for a response, and then we have checked to see if our response is null, and if so, we're gonna log an error. Now, what we're going to do is just check to see if we actually got a response. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go debug.log, and we are going to log our response dot data, which is an array. Um, now this is because you can set it up so it sends back multiple images, um, but generally it's just one. So this, since it's an array, we wanna get the first element, so zero, and then dot URL, okay? It doesn't actually send over the image itself, but rather it sends over a URL um, that we can use in order to download the generated image. So just to test this out, we are going to be logging to the console that URL in order to see if it works. So we can save this. We can go back inside of Unity right here and press play, okay? Um, but there is one issue, and that is we aren't actually calling the generate image function. So uh, before we actually play this, let's go back into the script here, and we are just going to create the start function and call that generate image function. There we go. Okay, so we'll save that, go back to the editor, and we'll try it once again. And let's actually then drag in our avatar icon as well, press play, and after a few seconds, okay, because it does take some time to send the request for it to process it, uh, generate a response, and then send it back, uh, we should then have it right here. And as you can see, we have this big URL that doesn't really mean much to us, but what we're going to be doing in the next lesson is basically downloading this image from the web and then displaying it in this image UI element right here. So I'll see you all then in the next lesson where we'll finish this off and get the image displayed on screen. Welcome back everyone. So in the previous lesson, we set it up so that we can actually make a request to the OpenAI uh, servers in order to generate an image based on a prompt right here. Okay, so we jet we created our request which contained the prompt and the image size. We then sent that over to the server with this line of code, and then we are pausing the function until we get a response. Now, if our response is null or if it doesn't have any image data contained in it, we are going to return and log an error to the console. Otherwise, we are basically logging our response to the console. Now what we need to do is instead of just displaying the, the URL, we want to actually go ahead and download this image from the web. Now to do this, we are gonna delete this debug line of code right here, and we are going to do this. We're gonna go using 
And inside of this using right here, we are going to create another variable called web rec for web request. And this is going to equal new unity web request. And with this, we need to give it a URL, which is going to be our response dot data, the first data uh, element in the array dot URL. Now we're doing a couple things here. First of all, we are using this using keyword right here and using um, is pretty handy if you want to dispose of something after you are using it. So pretty much what this means is we go using and then inside of its uh, parentheses here, we can define a variable. And what this basically means is that this variable is going to be created and then inside of its squiggly brackets, okay, similar to an if statement, we are going to then run code using that variable. And then afterwards, it is going to dispose of it correctly, okay, because this um, can result typically in uh, memory leaks or other information just sitting around. So if you're using the using keyword, that basically means that this variable is going to be disposed afterwards, okay. So what we are then doing is we are creating a variable called web request, which is equal to a new Unity web request. And this is basically Unity's built in um, library for communicating with the web. And this allows us to upload stuff to a website or a server and download stuff as well. Okay. Um, so what we're doing here is we are setting up a brand new web request to this URL, which is again, that image URL that we want to download. So we are creating a request to that URL, but what is the request? Well, the request is going to actually be downloading it. So inside of the using right here, we are going to go web rec dot download handler equals new download handler buffer. And a download handler is basically an object that allows us to download data from our web request. Okay, from the URL we are connecting to. Then we need to set the request header in order to actually have access and have the ability to download it. So we'll go web rec dot uh, set request header. This is going to be access dash control dash allow dash origin. Okay, and the value is just going to be an empty string. Then we want to send off the request. So we're going to go web rec dot send web request. Okay. Now we've sent that off, but just like with communicating with the API, this can take time. Okay. Because we are connecting to a server and we want to download the data from that server. So it is going to take some time. So what we then need to do is basically pause the function until this task has been completed. Now to do that, we are going to go while, okay, we'll create a little while loop here. So while the web request is not done, so we can then go web rec dot is done equals false. So is done again, this is a boolean for true or false for whether or not the request is done. Now, if it is not done, then we are just going to go await task dot yield. Okay. Uh, await again, we're using that keyword, which basically means it is pausing the function uh, for a specified amount of time. And in our case, task dot yield, that basically just means for the frame. So we're basically waiting a frame check in the condition again, waiting another frame, and it keeps going around, okay, until the uh, web request is done is equal to true, then we're going to continue on with the function. Now, once this has been completed, that basically means the image has been downloaded to our computer. So we can then set this as a texture and load it into the uh, avatar icon. So to do this, we're going to create a brand new texture 2D object here called texture. And this is just going to be equal to a new texture 2D. Uh, the size doesn't really matter because we are going to be loading in an image. So we can just give it two by two pixels. Then what we want to do is go texture dot load image. And this load image takes in a byte array, okay, a byte array of colors. So we are going to basically um, have this be our web rec dot download handler dot data. Okay, data being the data that was downloaded from this web request. And then finally, we want to go player avatar icon dot texture equals texture. Okay, and this is basically just going to assign that texture to our player avatar icon. So we can save this, we can then go back inside of the editor right here. And we can press play to see how it works. Make sure that the icon is assigned in the script component right here press play and we should then wait a few seconds and get a response by the image changing right here.
And as you can see, we did get a response, but it isn't really what we want. Um, this is quite a weird image. So what I'm going to do is go in and actually just change um, the prompt right here. Okay, I'm basically saying create an RPG player icon in a painted style. I think what it meant was, oh, I think uh, the AI is interpreting it as a player like item icon rather than a player uh, portrait. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go create a character portrait for an RPG character. Okay, there we go. We'll see if this um, gives us a better result. Okay, so it, hopefully it'll actually give us a character portrait icon. So press play, wait a few seconds once again, and there we go. So we now have our character portrait loaded in right here that was generated by the DALI model. Now what we need to do is set it up so that we can customize this prompt based on drop downs, based on sliders, based on input fields, and we are going to be working on that in the next lesson. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you all then.